What's going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're going to be going over the 6WB cluster. Now, if you guys saw my most recent video, I basically installed it on this BMW F30. My 2017 BMW 330. I absolutely love the cluster. It's a pretty easy install. So if you guys haven't seen that video already, definitely go check it out. But in that video, I mentioned to you guys, I'll be making another one, uh, basically going over like the features and, and things that I think you guys really need to know before investing in this cluster. So with that said, let's not waste any time and let's get into it. All right. So if you guys have not watched my most recent video, or if you're just not familiar with these clusters, this is what it looks like. So let me just fire up the car really quickly so you can see what it looks like when it's turned on. Just so you guys know, there's still a bit of daylight outside. So that's why I actually had to turn off my headlights to make sure that this car puts the cluster into sort of like it's daylight mode. So that way I can show you guys what the cluster is gonna look like uh, during the daylight. So of course this thing is fully digital, but if you guys can tell, it does have like these fixed circles around each like meter. And then it has this large, you guys can actually tell the difference between screen and not screen right over here. I did actually make a mistake and I mentioned in my previous video that the gas gauge as well as oil temperature gauge are fully digital. That's actually not true. And that's one of the pain points that I wanna talk about with this cluster. So I brought out the original cluster that was on the car so I can kind of compare. But if you guys can see right over there on the gas gauge, the needle is pretty long and it kind of like overlaps on the meter. So it is super, super easy to read. Whereas as you can tell on the digital one, the needle does not make it to the actual meter. Now this is a nitpicky thing, but it does make it a little harder to read. So like on this gauge, you can clearly see where the needle falls. Now the reason why it does that guys, if you can actually tell, is because only that little circle in the middle is digital. The rest of it is actually fixed. Like the screen is literally only that small circle in there. So there's literally no way that this digital needle can even reach to over here. And then the same exact thing also applies to your oil temperature. Now, obviously this is super small and something that I really shouldn't be complaining about, I know, but this cluster is super expensive, guys. Now you can get these things used for about like a thousand bucks, but if you choose to get it new, it's about like $1,700. Either way, it is super expensive. And I feel like something this expensive it should be like almost perfect because if you're gonna invest in something like this for your car, I don't know, I feel like you should have like almost no complaints. Again, something super small, but something worth noting, especially if you're gonna invest in these clusters. That was literally my only complaint with this cluster after owning it for like two weeks. Otherwise, it's been absolutely amazing. But with that said, guys, what I'm gonna do next is actually show you like some features in the cluster, just show you what it looks like in the different modes and stuff like that. Some cool things that I found that you can do to it as well. And then lastly, I wanna talk about some just warnings that you guys should really, really know before buying one of these clusters. So if you wanna see that, definitely stay tuned to the end of the video. So of course, this is what it looks like when you are in comfort mode. Now this looks more of like a classic gauge in my opinion. Uh, nothing too crazy about it. Obviously you have a large speedometer on the left, the RPMs on the right. And then you also get like this small little speedometer over here, which is digital and it's really nice. Something that's cool is once you guys are driving this and you get closer to a certain speed, that number gets larger. I'll throw up a clip so you guys can see what that looks like. But if you can tell right now, since the car is going zero miles per hour, of course, the zero is the largest. But let's say you get up to like 18 miles per hour, the 20, because that's the closest number, will get much larger, making it easy to see about like how fast you're going. And then of course you have your exact speed right over here up top, which is really convenient. Same thing with your RPM. So if I can actually rev it and show you guys. so. As you can see, once I get closer to like 2000 RPM, it gets bigger. Same thing with 1000 and all around. I know it's a small feature, but I think it's really cool. Anyways though, if you guys are familiar with these clusters, I actually showed you in the previous video, but it actually changes depending on the mode that you're in. So again, we're in comfort mode, but if I quickly switch it to eco mode, you guys will see all your different modes right over there and the whole thing will change. Now this sets it to more of like an eco-friendly mode. It's gonna show you like how much gas you're consuming. It's gonna kind of try to help you out save gas, which is really crucial, especially these days. You still get like your speed over here. Same thing, like it's gonna increase and whatnot. This doesn't really show your RPMs. It just kind of shows you like how much gas you're saving. But it's interesting because it still kind of works the same. Like if I rev it, it does that. But I think that's just really indicating that we're getting bad gas mileage. Regardless though, I'm not crazy about the eco mode because of course it is blue and I feel like it just doesn't really match the rest of the interior, especially being that I have red interior. And then also at night when you have like your orange lights going on over there and then on the doors over there. I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't really suit the rest of the car, but there's actually a way to change that and make it look a little better in my opinion. So I will show you guys that in a little bit, but before I do that, let's switch it to sport mode because I actually think that's the coolest one. Again, you guys can see your modes on the right and it gives you this really cool screen right over here. So now this is all pretty self-explanatory, but of course, as you can tell, everything goes red even the gas gauge and even the oil temperature gauge. And of course you get this large speedometer over here. You do still get this small one on top, which I still find really funny. 
don't know why you need two. You get your RPMs over here. It's just a lot easier to read and it just looks the coolest, honestly. Like, this is hands down the best mode for this cluster. Let me just give this a quick rev so you guys can see what it looks like. Nothing crazy, but it just looks really cool with the red, especially when you're driving. And overall, I think it just looks really cool on the dash uh, with the steering wheel. I think it'll look better once I get an M Sport steering wheel. And it also matches like my red interior, the orange lights and all that type of stuff. So hands down, this is definitely the coolest mode in this cluster. If you guys are gonna buy this cluster, honestly, you're probably gonna buy it mainly for the sport mode. Comfort mode looks good and it makes the car look a little more premium, uh, which is nice, but it's not too crazy. Eco mode, this doesn't really look the best in my opinion. But again, like I said, there's a way to change that so i'll show you guys that later but sport mode and sport plus mode which are pretty much the same look absolutely amazing i swear guys it looks even better in person again that's what i think makes this cluster worth it but anyways guys that was a quick look at all the different modes in the daylight of course because i had the headlights turned off so the car thinks it's daytime but let me turn the headlights back on so the car thinks that it's nighttime because it pretty much is at this point anyways and i'll show you guys what the different modes would look like at night so now if i switch the headlights back on to automatic you'll see that they turn on and now the car thinks that it's nighttime. So since I'm already on sport mode, might as well show you guys, it literally does not change. Sport mode, thankfully, you'll actually stay the same in the day and at night, which I'm honestly not complaining about because it looks amazing. I don't want it to change. The one that will change though is gonna be comfort mode. So if we switch it back down to comfort, as you guys can tell, before it was all white, now it is all red. It's definitely really interesting. If I can quickly show you guys just like a quick before and after. So if I switch the headlights back on to off, you'll see they turn white. And if we switch the headlights back on, they'll turn red again. So of course that means this is what it's gonna look like at night. And then the white is what it looks like in the day. Personally, I actually like the look of this one a lot more. I wish there was a way to keep it like this even at night. Cause I just think this looks cleaner. It looks more sophisticated. The red doesn't look bad. But you know, I just think the white looks better. It definitely beats the blue in eco mode, that's for sure. Uh, the red just suits the car a little better. But again, if I switch it to like the daytime, I just feel like this looks more premium and more expensive, a little more sophisticated. I don't know, let me know if you guys agree. I just overall like the look of the white compared to the red, which still looks good. But again, just for fun, nothing beats sport mode. Yeah, that just looks so good. It looks sick, guys, honestly. If there's something that'll convince you to get this cluster, I think it's gonna be sport mode here. But yeah, anyways, guys, similar to sport mode, eco mode won't change at night or in the day. It's literally the same. So if I switch between the two, it's the same. But anyways, with that said, guys, let me show you a couple cool things we can change about this cluster just using our iDrive system and going into the settings. So now if we go into my vehicle, we go into iDrive settings and we go into displays, we can go into the instrument panel, which is what we'll need. So if we click into there, we have a whole bunch of different options for things to do. One of the first things I wanna show you guys actually has to do with this Eco Pro info. So if we uncheck that, I'll press it on the screen over here and I'll show you guys what happens. All that goes away. So now, as you guys know, if you watch my channel, this is my daily driver. I drive this car to save gas. I have a 435, which is two nuts and wider wheels. I have an X3 M40, but this is a car I drive day to day. My wife drives it. Uh, I don't drive it to be sporty all the time. I drive it to save gas, to be comfortable. So I do drive this car in eco mode a lot. That's why I keep on talking about like the blue screen in eco mode. But as you guys can tell, Right there, I was able to change it. So now this way, when I put the car into eco mode, it literally looks exactly the same as it does in comfort mode. So although that's great, now that we have it like that, now if I go into sport mode, if I can show you really quickly, you'll notice it still doesn't change. It no longer goes to that cool sport mode, which is really strange because on the screen here, guys, it says Eco Pro Info. I don't know why it would impact the sport mode, but that's definitely what's causing it because if I recheck that, you'll see right over here, it turns back into that mode. If I uncheck it, it turns like that. So pretty much, guys, it feels like either you have all the different modes or you have none of the modes which kind of sucks because I either drive this car in eco mode or sport mode. I barely ever drive it in comfort. I either wanna, you know, save gas or have fun with it. So it kind of sucks. So for me personally, I actually leave it checked. So that way I have all the different modes and I put up with the blue screen in eco. Um, unfortunate, but it is what it is. So the last thing I wanna show you guys in this cluster has to do with comfort modes. So as you can see, you have your traditional, you know, speedometer, RPMs, and you also have these additional indicators down below on each side. Now this doesn't only apply to the digital cluster, it does also apply 
to the standard one. But if you guys don't like the way that those look, which I personally don't, there is a way to turn that off. So in the same screen, the very first thing says additional indicators. So if you uncheck that, you can see those additional indicators go away. It gives it a much cleaner look. Again, this is not only applied to the digital cluster, it applies to the normal ones. Here's just a wide angle view of it. So if we turn it back on, this is what it looks like. And if we turn it off, Again, I just personally think it looks cleaner. If you guys like them, feel free to keep them. Uh, I just personally usually keep them off, especially in this digital cluster. So now that I gave you guys a nice high level view of what the cluster looks like, you're more familiar with it. I wanna go into some things I wanna tell you before you buy one, specifically if you're planning on buying one used, which a lot of people do because these things are very expensive new. Again, they're about like 1700 bucks new, but you can get them used for like a thousand, sometimes even less. So chances are, if you're gonna buy one, you're gonna buy one used. So with that said, if you do buy them used, make sure you get one that's virginized. And what that essentially means is, although these cars, everything is stored, so like your mileage and all the information about the cars, it's stored in the ECUs and the computers. It's not stored within the actual clusters. Once you install a digital cluster or any cluster for that matter onto your car, the cluster is gonna read and pick up the VIN from the car and all the information that's stored within. And it's gonna start to display that information on the cluster. The main thing being the mileage. However, if you're getting it used, it already has a previous car's information stored within it. And unfortunately, once you install it onto your car, it's not just gonna overwrite all that information that it already has, it's gonna carry that information over. So it's gonna throw off a whole bunch of things in your car, it's gonna make the car, you know, throw up a whole bunch of like signals and service lights because it doesn't know when the last time it had service. Although the cluster itself could start to work, it's just gonna come up that it's tampered, so it's gonna have a little red light on it, uh, which you guys probably even saw in my previous video before I got it coded, by default it's always gonna have that red light. But if the cluster was not virginized, um, it will always have that red light because again, it doesn't really know how much mileage the car has. It already has like a previous car's information stored on it. So to avoid that, you have to get your cluster virginized. Now, some people do sell them used and they're already virginized. So basically they're starting off with a clean slate. You can install it on your car and can pick up all the information from your car. It doesn't have a previous car throwing it off. Some will already come virginized, but if they don't, you still can get them virginized. It is a process. Basically you have to like open up the cluster. You have to take off like the motherboard and all this type of stuff. You need to like solder it back on. Uh, it's a mess. I personally want to do that that's out of my wheelhouse. So it's definitely something you probably need a professional to do. And obviously you wanna get someone who knows what they're doing because you don't wanna mess up your very expensive cluster. So if you buy one used, just double check, is it already virginized or is it not? If it's not, take that into account. Uh, you're gonna have to pay to get it virginized. You're gonna have to find like someone locally who does it or there's someone that'll do it in eBay. I believe they're located in Massachusetts. You basically mail it out to them, they'll virginize it they'll send it back to you. But anyways, the next thing I wanna talk about is actually installing the cluster. So if you guys saw my previous video, I installed it. Uh, the actual physical part of installing is super easy. It only requires like two Torx screws. Then you pull the cluster out, you put the two screws back in. The hard part is coding it to the car. Now, when I say code it to the car, I'm not talking about like Beamer code or Carly or anything like that. Like this is like legitimate coding. So much like when you guys get a second key coded, it's that type of coding. So you probably need a professional to do it. If you don't get it coded, it's just not gonna work properly. Like it'll turn on and you'll see the lights and stuff like that, but nothing will read correctly. Uh, your gas will like show that it's always low. Your RPMs will always be at zero. Like it's just not gonna work. You do have to get it coded. That's not an option, you have to. And the reason why that's important is because if you buy it used, obviously you're responsible for getting it coded. Whereas if you buy it new, for example, from Keys Motorsports, although it was $1,700, that actually already includes a coding process which they will do remotely. Versus if you buy it used, let's say for $1,000, you probably have to go and pay someone 150, maybe 200 bucks to code it for you. So do keep that in mind. So I know that was probably a lot. I just rambled for a long time. Hopefully I didn't lose you guys in that ramble and hopefully it all made sense. So I'm just trying to share this new knowledge that I've learned and uh, hopefully make your guys' life a lot easier, especially if you're really thinking about buying one of these clusters. But anyways, uh, hopefully that was helpful and entertaining. If it was, make sure you drop me a like, uh, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And uh, yeah, guys, with that said, I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.